Hi, I'm Neil, and in this video, we'll be making game assets. And as it's a two part series, for the part one, we'll be talking about the technical aspects of stuff, and for the part two, we'll actually be making a model from start to finish. So, without any further ado, let's just get into it. So, let's start with the basics. Whether you're making a low poly asset, a stylized asset, or a realistic asset, what you have to follow is this workflow modeling, unwrapping, texturing, and exporting. So, let's start with modeling. So, modeling is pretty subjective as no two people will model the same thing the same way. But there are a few key things we have to keep in mind, such as quad topology, avoiding n-gons, and knowing where to avoid triangles. Now, it's better to show you, so let's follow with an example. So let's start with triangles. Now, the problem with triangles is that we lose the edge flow and the shading is really irregular. So let's start with the edge flow. Here we have two planes, one with quads and one with triangles. Now for the quad ones, I can select a random row or a column wherever I click. I can select the whole column or the row. This is known as edge flow. But for the triangle one, I can't really do that. Let's see whichever mode I go. Let's go vertices, let's go edges and faces. Whichever way I go, I can select the whole row or the column as it doesn't know which way I want to go. Now one of the problems this might create is during unwrapping where you have to mark a seam. In the quad ones I can just select, go to UV, mark seam. But in this uh, for the triangles I'll have no way to select the whole row without individually selecting every edge which is not feasible. And there goes your edge flow. Now let's talk about the irregular smoothing part. Here I have two cylinders, one with quads and one with triangles. Now if I shade it smooth there seems to be no difference but if I add a subdivision to both of them, the triangle one develops some kind of artifact. The shadows go wavy and if I increase them the creases become more visible. Now to actually show how the triangle affects the shading, let's deform the mesh a bit. Let's say I'll indented the triangle one seems to have some kind of straight lines going towards and that is not good moving on to n gons which are just closed shapes with n number of edges now similar as triangles this also blocks the edge flow now if i wanted to select from here to here i cannot i can only select this three because this guy is blocking the path also with edges it seems like i should be able to select the whole column here but no same with vertices i cannot seem to select the whole row or column now the most common smoothing issues with n gons is you try to cut a shape into an object so let's say i have got this keyhole shape into this cube now i don't want these edges to be visible so i shade it smooth and now i have this shading issue that's because when i added the boolean i've created two end gones here and here which mesh up the shading now the only way to fix this is make the number of edges inside similar to the number of edges outside so we'll have to add loop cuts here and make them individual faces also you might think that why don't i just turn on auto smoothing the thing is auto smoothing doesn't solve the problem it just hides it regardless it'll throw an exception or it won't allow you to import the mesh now moving on to subsurface and bad normal the problem with subsurface is where the most beginners model is they simply add a mesh, they add a subdivision to it, shade it smooth, and they cut loops into it. Now, the problem with this kind of modeling in game assets is you have way too many polygons and the edges are way too close which give light leaks in game images. Also, the same results can be achieved using a bevel which has 165 faces or auto smoothing which only have 34 faces and compared to the subsurface one, it has over 9000 polygons. Now, moving on to normals, what I mean by bad normals is a plane has two sides the front and the back and they are marked with colors such as blue and red now in game engines we have such a thing as back face culling where it's too much to render both sides of the plane so the game engine only renders the front side and the back side is invisible. Now if you have a mesh with a face inverted, the mesh won't render properly. Also having an inverted normal can mesh with the shading. If you shade it smooth, even if you add subdivision, the mesh will always be weird. Simple way to solve this problem is select the mesh, select everything, we go to mesh, normals and recalculate outside. Also if it doesn't work, you can always go to overlays, face orientation, select the red ones and flip it and it's solved. Now let's get on with unwrapping. Now, unwrapping wrapping first is know your seam so let's start with that so here we have an axe and if i had to add a seam how would i add a seam so let's start with the materials this axe would have three materials the wood grain part the varnished wood and metal so if i have to mark seams it would be around this then around this and as this seems like a single part i can cut which would separate out this head and this face. It would be like this. Wood grain material for the top and bottom. The handle laying flat at the top as a single piece. 
and which gives us the two faces which are separate and that's how we unwrap now let's move on to textile density textile density is all about having consistency throughout the mesh so that all of the material have same amount of detail so let's use the x we just unwrapped so this this and this these three textile islands use the same mesh which is the head but if i made this smaller than other two islands so this face now has less detail compared to this face which would be inconsistent and the model as a whole would look bad now let's talk about uv overlaps uv overlaps simply state that no two islands should overlap each other let's use the x for an example here this is part of the metal this is part of the wood so one of these islands would be spilling their material over another island also let's use this example this spider has six identical legs so someone might think hey why don't i just save some uv space using overlapping uvs for all of these six legs as all of this would unwrap the same way and should have the same texture the thing is every time you import an object into game engine the lighting has to be rebuilt now this is because the game engine doesn't recalculate the lighting every time a level is loaded it saves the lighting data in the form of light map using the object uvs now as no two objects can have the exact same lighting so that all of these six legs would have a different kind of light map data but as the uvs overlap they would be just overlapping over each other this confuses the game engine and we are thrown an error the light maps uvs are overlapping by 12.8 percent please adjust content now let's talk about unims so let's say to achieve the perfect textile density i had to increase the size of this island so much so that now it overlaps with other islands and since i don't have any space left in this uv the only possible way it seems is to reduce the size but in doing so i'll be losing some resolution and i don't want to do that so in case of such problems we'll be using udims what udim stands for is u dimension and what it basically does is create another texture space in the x or y direction so it's basically using two texture maps for one mesh and if we had two texture maps i could take this island and shift it here so how do we do that first we create a new image let's call it x underscore udims select tiled and press ok so now we have our first udim tile so to make another uv space press the plus button and press ok and now we can just select this island and shift it here and that covers udims now i'm skipping the texturing part as i'll have to explain it again in the second part anyways and i don't want to do it twice so let's just go to exporting so in exporting we just have three things first preloading the model knowing our orientation and exporting format the, so in exporting we just have three things preloading the model model orientation and just export format so let's finish this quick now what do i mean by preloading is after we're done with the textures and we have exported all our textures we can simply just shift d make a duplicate of our object then select the original object remove every texture we have and add a new material and in that material we're gonna import back all the textures that we actually rendered now what this does is you can visualize the errors such as this and this also when you export this model that textures will already be exported with it so when you import it back into a game engine you don't have to make another material and reroute everything into this mesh and finally let's talk about export formats and orientation let's start with export formats so the most common export formats in game assets are fpx and obj and how you export them is simply going to file export fpx the settings are fine just press export and same for obj you go to file export OB with front obj and just press export now let's talk about orientation so a 3d software has three axes right the x the y and the z axis and in blender the z axis positive z axis points up and every time we export a model in this way the orientation of it will always be the z up but some game engines like unreal engine and unity have the y axis up so every time we export the model in this way the orientation it will be important in the game engine is will be like this so how do we get over this one of the ways to get over this is simply rotate your mesh but let's say you have a house asset and you made it in blender so z is up but you want to export it into unreal engine so every time you import the house this house will be slanted and you can't just rotate the house because you can't edit a house like this right so how do you change the orientation let's say we're exporting into fbx and in the transform panel you simply set minus z forward and y up and every time it exports it will apply the transform and the y axis will be up same with obj you just go with an obj transform minus z forward and y axis up so even though the house is set up it will be exported as y up and that's it now this video took forever to make and was terribly boring so if you stick till the end thank you and i'll see you in the next one Bye. Mm -hmm.